Hey, what's going on guys? It's Brian with Superman's Comics, and this is my weekly picks for new comics that are coming out Wednesday, May 29th, 2019. So we have some great books coming out this week, some from Dark Horse I like, IDW I like, Marvel, DC, and some independents. So let's get into the picks. So my first pick this week is from Dark Horse Publishing, and it is a one-shot. This is the Hellboy vs. Lobster Johnson Ring of Death. I have this mostly in this video for the cover alone. Paolo Rivera, love this cover, reminds me of a movie poster. That's why I have it in the pit. Next up is not so much a comic, but a trade paperback. It's from Dark Horse as well, and it is the God of War trade paperback, collecting issues zero through four. If you have a Sony PlayStation, you're well aware of God of War. Fantastic video game. This trade paperback goes along with the newest video game where Kratos battles the Norse gods. Love the game, love the book picking up the trade. Getting into DC books, first pick for DC this week is Batman Last Night on Earth number one. Bruce Wayne wakes up in an asylum, he's never been Batman, and he begins his tale of the sprawling dark night, featuring familiar foes of the DC universe. There's a regular Greg Capullo cover, we also have a fantastic regular price variant by Jock. Next, never releasing late, just coming out when it wants to, we have Doomsday Clock number 10. Written by Jeff Johns, art by Gary Frank. This issue is going to reveal Dr. Manhattan's connection to the DC Universe as a regular cover and a regular price variant by Gary Frank. Here we have Heroes in Crisis number 9. I've been loving this miniseries, maxi series, I guess you can call it, because it's a little bit more issues than a normal miniseries. So the murders at Sanctuary have been solved, but the person behind it is someone you never expected. We have a regular cover by Clay Mann, and there's also a regular price variant by Ryan Sook. I tend to like the regular covers on this one, so I'm gonna be picking up the Clay Mann cover. Moving over to IDW. My pick this week from IDW is Amber Blake number three. Now, unless you've been living under a rock, you should be well aware of this title. Love the story, love the art, and so does the secondary market. Amber Blake continues her story of revenge, but she also finds out some of her allies have their own agendas. We have a regular cover by Butch Geis, there's also a regular price variant by Catherine Nodet. Moving right along over into Image, Ascender number two is coming out this week. Really love the first issue. Honestly, I didn't get to finish the Descender, but I'm really digging Ascender so far. Really enjoyed the first issue, so I'm picking up number two. And one thing I really like these books is there's only one cover. So don't have to worry about which one's gonna be hot, which one's not, but the story's more important anyways, so that's why I'm gonna pick this book up. Spawn number 297. Everyone's well aware of the big announcement they just made for Spawn number 300. Bunch of different covers, bunch of different artists. This is The Road to 300, continuing with regular cover by Francisco Matina, a regular price virgin variant by Francisco Matina, and a black and white variant. I do not have the cover art for a black and white variant, so I apologize for that. But as they've all been, I'm sure it's going to be one that a lot of fans enjoy picking up. Some additional printings to be aware of. Die number four has a third print coming out this week. Little Birds number one has a third print coming out this week. And Walking Dead number 191 has a second print. Moving on over to Marvel this week, the company of many covers. We kick it off with Amazing Spider-Man number 22. This is gonna conclude the Hunted story arc with Craven the Hunter. There's gonna be four different covers for it. There's a regular Umberto Ramos cover. There's a regular price Battle Lines variant, which happens to be my favorite cover of this issue. There's a Lionel Francis U connecting variant and an incentive variant by Aaron Cooter. Next, we have one of my favorite reads right now in the Marvel Universe, and that's Chip Zdarsky's Daredevil with Daredevil number six. I keep telling you, if you aren't reading this, you definitely need to be picking this up. Fantastic story, fantastic interiors by Marco Cicchetto, and great regular covers by Julian Totino Tedesco. This guy have a regular cover by Tedesco, and an incentive hidden gem variant by John Romita Jr. There's also a second printing of Daredevil number four that's coming out this week, so be on the lookout for that. Fantastic Four number 10. I don't have the regular cover on here. I don't care too much for the story, but there is an incentive variant for this week, and it's by Bill Senkovich. Looks to be a one in 25. A lot of Bill Sengovitz fans out there, especially with these Fantastic Four covers, so I'm gonna pick this up. Mortal Hulk number 18. Seems to be dying down from the amount of attention it was getting, but still a great story about Al Ewing. Still love those Alex Ross regular covers, so I'm gonna pick the regular cover up, but it also has a Battle Lines variant, so there are multiple new printings for a Mortal Hulk coming out. Issue number one has a fifth printing. 
Issue number two has additional printing with a 1 in 25 incentive variant. Issues number three, six, and seven have additional printing, as well as issues number 13, 14, 15, and 16. So the buzz might have died down, but it's not died down enough for Marvel to stop putting out additional printing, especially with those incentive variants for the additional printings. Next, we have Magnificent Miss Marvel number three. This is another book that I'm not really buying for the story, but it does have a regular price Battle Lines variant for it this week, so I'll be picking that up. I really enjoy the Battle Lines variants. I haven't been picking all of them up, but I pick up a majority of them, it seems, and I still continue the thought process that, one, I like the art, so I pick them up for my collection, but two, I think down the road, people might want to collect full sets of these Battle Lines variants, so that's where they'll probably be sought after, especially down the road when they're no longer available at your local comic book stores and people have them stashed away in their collections. Major X number four comes out this week. Hasn't been doing a lot of movement on the secondary market with these regular covers, but there's a lot of buzz around it, especially with the creator Rob Liefeld. I mean, people love them, people hate them, all types of news around that, but we do have issue number four coming out this week, as well as a third printing of number one and a second printing of number three. Next, we have Star Wars Darth Vader Visions number four. I don't talk too much about a lot of Star Wars comics on here, mostly because I haven't been able to keep up with them, but this is one that I have been reading and really enjoying it. This is gonna concentrate on Darth Vader's missions in the TIE Fighter. It's gonna have a regular cover. There's also an incentive variant by Ricardo Federici. If I could pick up the Federici variant for ratio or just under it, definitely gonna be adding that to my collection. Thanos number two. This has been retelling kind of the origin between Thanos and Gamora how they met, how Gamora came to be, how Thanos came to be. This is gonna be issue number two. Love these Jeff DeCall covers. There is gonna be a regular price Jim Bartell variant. Jim Bartell, super hot. She just put out the Thanos Adidas shoe and she's been doing those Virgin variants that are really scorching up on the market. There's also a 1 in 25 incentive variant by Dan Panosian. Thor number 13. It's no secret if you're watching my videos, I'm a huge fan of Jason Aaron's run. This is gonna be a War of the Realms tie-in where Odin sends his brother Cole backstabbing uncle to Thor into Malekith's kingdom to get intel on the Black Bifrost. Now, will he provide that intel or will he continue to be a backstabber? We'll have to read the issue to find out. This is gonna have a regular Mike DeMundo cover. There's a regular price Battle Lines variant and an Alex Ross Marvel's 25th tribute variant. I like either the Battle Lines variant, but I also like that Alex Ross. So I'm gonna be picking both of those up if I can. Also, it's important to note Jason Aaron is gonna be ending his run on Thor this summer. Really sad to see that because I really love his run, but I'm sure he's moving on to better work. Moving on over Independence this week, we have from Boom Studios, Angel Number One. Boom surprised local comic book stores by issuing Angel Number Zero with the last issue of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. It even had a one per store thank you variant in there, but now we have Angel Number One. There's gonna have four different covers for it. There's a regular Dan Panosian cover. There's a regular price connecting variant. There's a regular price pre-order variant and an incentive variant. If you saw on our channel, we had an interview with Arun Singh, the VP of Marketing for Boom Studios, gave a lot of good information about Buffy the Vampire Slayer. They're creating a whole universe at Boom Studios. Normally, I would have not picked this comic up, but having talked to Arun and seeing where they're going with the Buffy universe, I'm definitely gonna be picking this issue up. Next, we have Battle Cats Volume 2 Number 1. This is releasing from Mad Cave Studios. I really enjoyed the first volume, so I'm definitely gonna be picking this one up. Plus, I've been loving pretty much anything Mad Cave's been putting out lately. Mark London writes fantastic stories between Battle Cats, Knights of the Golden Sun, Honor and Curse, so I'm definitely picking up volume two, issue number one this week. Dark Red number three, this is from Aftershock Comics. I've been enjoying this series. And issue number three is gonna take a look back at Chip's past in World War II, where a small group of soldiers that was pursued by Nazis wander into a dilapidated French hotel. And one man's life becomes changed forever. Next, we have Horror Comics number one. This comes from Antarctic Press, written by Bradley Golden. This tells a story about Ice Cream Man that offers up delicious flavors of ice cream made from the flesh of his victims. There's three different covers for this. There's a regular cover, there's a blank cover, and there's an incentive teether variant. Next, we have Killer Groove number one. This comes from Aftershock Comics. It's about a musician while hanging out with his drunk friend, gets tangled up with the mob. Not only does he find a new career, but he also finds new inspiration about what to write his music about. We have a regular cover, and there's also an incentive variant by Cliff Richards. Next, we have Queen of Bad Dreams number two. 
This book reminds me part Inception movie, part Neil Gaiman Sandman, but we got Dream Detectives. Really enjoyed the first issue, so I'm definitely picking up issue number two. Next, we have She Said Destroy number one. This comes from Vault Comics as well. Really looking forward to reading this. This story is about Brigid, the goddess of the sun, who's pretty much got the whole solar system worshiping her, except for one space colony. And who does that colony worship? Brigid's sister, Morrigan, who's also the only other god left. So, Brigid's forces prepare for final battle, while Morrigan prepares to do what she does best, destroy. Fantastic synopsis, can't wait to pick this up. I actually like the cover B for it. It is an homage to Saga. In fact, I love that cover so much, it's gonna be my pick of the week. Next, we have the Wailing Blade number one. This comes from Comics Tribe. It's about the head taker who pretty much takes the head off anyone he meets and he's got his eyes set on a prince's father while the prince tries to do anything to save his life. This is gonna ship with two different covers randomly, cover A and cover B, so be on the lookout for both of those. It is important to know that this was a Kickstarter before, so there's a Kickstarter edition of this cover out there. So if you can find those as well, you might be interested in picking those up. So there it is guys, those are my picks for new comics that are coming out Wednesday, May 29th, 2019. As always, make sure you comment down below, let me know what books you guys are picking up, and be sure to tune into my channel live every Thursday night as Jack DeMeo, AKA Mr. Bolo and I recap the week's hottest releases and the CBSI Bolo list. That's Thursday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern, live on Simple Man's Comics channel. Question of the day, who's your favorite comic book artist right now and why? Answer down in the comments below, guys. This is Brian with Simple Man's Comics, and I'll see you guys next week.